Hello everyone, this is a quick update on what happened just with the vote for Tesla, Elon's comp and the move to Texas. In case you missed it, uh, the vote went through, Elon's comp was approved again by the shareholders, by us, and the move to Texas, as I predicted, was approved. First, I want to congratulate Elon, who worked tremendously for no pay since 2018. He deserves it. Thank you, Elon, for everything you're doing and for building one of the greatest company that was ever existent in the history of humanity. And I want to thank Alexandra Mertz, Tesla Boomer Mama, who was a driving force for this operation and achieved an unprecedented victory for the pioneers. Alexandra, thank you so much. But also thanks to all of you who participated and made this happen. We, the Tesla shareholders, rejected the atrocious social justice court in Delaware that violated their duty and their promise to the American people to uphold free markets, prosperity, and protect us. Screw you, Delaware. Screw you, court. And glad to meet you, Texas, where contracts count and communist anti-American judges have hopefully no place to hide. I can't wait for this relocation. This is a tremendous day for all Tesla shareholders, for everyone who loves freedom and free markets, who believes in our rights to actually do contracts with each other without interference by some social justice warrior, and who believe in progress in America. Now, I want to talk briefly about my prediction model. This is what this video is all about. In the last video on X and YouTube, I was the person in the world on all these platforms who actually stepped up and made a specific prediction. There were a few others doing something similar, but I was the first and I made a very simple, in my mind, simple model to predict how these votes end up. And I want to go quickly into that. And I, I want to explain in a second why, but first let's take a look. Let's take a look at my model and you can actually look it up in my previous video. I'm not cheating here. This is exactly what I showed in the video, including these numbers. I didn't touch the numbers. Now, I factored in, you know, I like simple numbers and simple models, and you can look into the formulas how I did this whole thing, but that's how I model out reality, right? I have my convictions, I come up with a thesis, I model this very quickly into Google Sheets, um, but it's a little art and science at the same time. And I'm picking the right key driving variables, uh, putting in the formulas, and then making informed assumptions based on a predictive, you know, Bayesian thinking where I approximate the percentages. And my prediction in the end was in 2024 that we will have 77% of people voting or 77% of total votes will be casted in favor of comp. The actual numbers came in at 74% last time I checked. So I was at 77 predicted, 74 came in. On Texas, and that was against what most people thought. I said, Texas is going to pass after a second thinking about it. Because I had some hints from institutional shareholders that the votes on Texas, even though it's a higher hurdle in theory, that in reality, many more institutional shareholders will vote yes on Texas because there's no reason to vote no against it, right? Whereas on comp, there are many more reasons when you put yourself into the shoes of, you know, managerial, you know, capitalists, they have more reasons to vote against it. Uh, on Texas, they don't. And so I predict in this model that 60% of all shares will actually vote for Texas, right? Not of the casted votes, but of all shares. And this actually is very accurate. When you look at Elon's tweet, it looks like pretty much exactly 60% voted yes on Texas. Now, why is this important? Number one, um, my predictions were the most accurate in the entire world on what is going to happen here. They are also very, very important because they help me doing the right trades. And I hope you too, my viewers, even though it's not financial advice, I'm just sharing the predictions. The accuracy here is astonishing, saying 60% on Texas when everyone disagreed and then nailing it at 60%, saying 77% and then seeing 74% coming in, it's pretty good. Now, why is this so important? I don't want to boast or anything, but this is kind of a good achievement that shows you how I think and why it's important to follow this channel. I trained my brain to be able to predict the future. This is very important in my day job where I lead Quantine and build the future of medicine, where we are constructing new turnkey solutions for hospital systems to actually get 
the most advanced genomics and artificial intelligence systems inside these hospital systems. In my day job, a lot of people, you know, treat me a little bit the same way Elon gets treated. That's why I can connect to Elon so well. And I by no means compare myself to Elon for obvious reasons. I'm much, much smaller. Everything is not as big as uh, the stuff he's doing. But I experience similar things where I'm doing things and most people disagree with me. Um, and I have to you know, push that through and make it happen. And that's why I relate so much to Elon. He sees the future too. He builds amazing things. Some people love him for that, but a lot of people hate him. And for us, the pioneers, you and me, the people who believe, you know, in Tesla, in Elon and this future, and me who also believes in Quantine, we have to learn to be very good in predicting the future. And we have to train our brains to be very good at these kinds of models. It allows us to see what others can't see. It allows us to sync with Elon's brain. It allows us to accurately predict where Tesla is actually going and when. And the way I'm doing this is exactly the way I did this model. And I just want to share this. And for me, it's very important to do this, to hold myself accountable, to have you guys pushing back and have these discussions we had on YouTube where I pushed back on you guys. Right? And I said, no, no, this is actually accurate. And turns out it is. And it's important to have these, uh, to create a hypothesis, to quantify it in models, to actually hold yourself accountable, to put it out into the world. And when you're wrong, and I'm constantly slightly wrong, I calibrate these models. And you con continuously have to do that to have the right approach to assessing these things. So um, it's the ultimate challenge for me. I think it's the most important thing you can do, predict the future accurately. I want to hold myself accountable by publishing these things. You have to be aware that what I did there is pretty bold because if I'm wrong, I look very stupid. And so that puts a lot of, you know, pressure on me to concentrate. And that's why you guys should hold me accountable for this uh, in the future because I will keep doing this. That's why you should follow the channel. Um, I wa also want to thank you guys to actually help me do these things. Uh, it's very helpful. And, you know, it's a constant training. It's also key to not be biased in, in your thinking. You need to make these bold predictions, for example, the institutional shareholders, what, how do they behave? And instead of just ranting on X or YouTube and saying something and not holding yourself accountable, this is the way to get it done. So what happens next? I think from here, a lot of suppressive power on the Tesla stock is gonna fall to the wayside. I think we have now a straight line of sight to the, uh, uh, Robotexia and Vil on uh, August 8th. I think it's going to be a hell of a ride. And I think the ride is going to go up and uh, we will see what happens in between. It's very important now to predict what's going to happen. It's very important to quantify it accurately. For example, if the stock runs up too much, right, there might be a dip after August 8th. If it doesn't run up enough, there might be a bump after August 8th. So it's important to continuously watch this and be very accurate. Also observe FSD and what's going to come. Like, are we on track on this exponential improvement curve for FSD or not? Optimus is always lurking in the background, looking at what's happening there. We have some more news coming in. If the production of the new platform, the Robotaxi, is going to actually get delayed, you know, until 2027, there was some JP Morgan talk. If that happens, what does it mean? Does it mean there is no FSD revenue before 2007, 2027? All these are very interesting questions that we are now free to observe after this crazy thing is actually behind us. So bye-bye, Delaware. Hello, Texas. Thanks, you guys, for watching this. I hope we will have many more predictions, and I can't guarantee you that I'm always this accurate, but I will try my best, and together we can predict the future and then build it. See you around.